हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टनिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टनिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. Part 1. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Hello. Hi, is that Tanya? Yes, Simon. Lovely to hear you. How are you? Very well, and we're so looking forward to seeing you. So am I. Now, I don't have a lot of time, I'm afraid. So, I wanted to make sure we've got all your details. Have you confirmed your flights? Yes, I'm definitely coming on the 22nd of June. Excellent. Have you got your flight number? Not with me I'm afraid, but I promise I'll email it. Let me make a note of all this. Yes, do, because one of us will try to come and collect you from the airport if we can. I presume you'll be coming into terminal 1? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to find out which one it is. Yes, you must. <laughs> we don't want to be waiting at the wrong one. But hang on. I'll be arriving at about lunchtime. And that'll mean you have to take time off work to pick me up. You really mustn't do that. Look, we're not all that busy at work, and if there's a problem, I can text you when you arrive and you can take a taxi. Okay. There's a really good company called Pantera. Can you spell that? It's P A N T E R A. They have a stand at the airport. You can't miss it and they're really reliable. Great. Thanks. How far are you from the airport? About 40 minutes. And you're near the city center, aren't you? We're east of it actually. Uh, don't tell the driver city center because you'll really get caught up in traffic. Okay. And I'll make sure I carry your address with me. Now, have you got my mobile a uh, cell phone number? Yes, you sent it last month. But I tell you what, I don't think I've got yours. I'd better have it now just in case. Okay, and I changed it recently anyway. Ready? It's 07765328411. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Thanks. Now, what should I pack? Well, all the usual, casual clothes mainly. Though you'd better bring an evening dress. We'll be having at least one fancy dinner in a hotel restaurant. Okay, now, when you're coming, unfortunately the weather is not going to be brilliant. I know, it's the rainy season. I'm bringing an umbrella. Uh, we have tons of those. So don't pack one. But pack a raincoat, a good one, cuz we'll try and get out for plenty of hikes. Okay, sure. Sounds super. Just what I love. And I'd better remember to pack my sturdy walking shoes. Excellent idea. It's pretty rugged round here, so they have to be tough. I can imagine. I'm so looking forward to getting out. Oh, Simon, before I forget, you recommended I read a book about your area. Yeah. What was the name again? I'd like to read it to get an idea of the history, etc. 
It's called Mountain Lives, and it's... Hang on, I'm just writing it down. OK? And it's by Rex Campbell. Great. I'll try and get hold of that. Well worth it. Now, the really important things are gifts. Oh, don't worry about that. Just bring yourself. I know. <laughs> but I'd like to get something for your parents. What about Janice? I know she loves English tea. Oh, that's very kind. But she's not drinking so much of that these days. But she'd love some chocolate. You know her favourite. Oh, yes. That'd be nice. I'll do that. And Alec, is he still into racing? <laughs> very much so. I was thinking of bringing a calendar, you know, with horse racing pictures. What a good idea. He'd love that. Great. So that's about it, I think. Yes, I think so. So you'll send me your number again? That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. You will hear a podcast on Camber's theme park. Now you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Welcome to Canvas Park Podcast. In the next few minutes, I'll tell you a little about the park and the amazing things we have to offer. We like to think that Canvas offers more than other theme parks. Like them, we have a variety of exciting rides for people of all ages, but Canvas also places strong emphasis on the educational experience for its visitors. Not boring facts but lots of interactive exhibits. Although it's mainly an outdoor experience, we do have some indoor activities if the weather gets too dreadful. The park's got a lovely, well-established feel. Set in 80 acres of beautiful countryside, about three miles south of the tourist resort of Dulchester. The park was set up in 1997, by the Camber family, but then taken over by new owners in 2004, who have maintained the original vision of the Cambers. It has lots of old trees, hundreds of flower beds, and a gorgeous lake. Cambers has over 45 different rides, exhibits, and arcades. All but one of these is free once you've paid your entrance fee. We charge a small fee for our newest ride to reduce the length of the queues. You don't pay anything for parking. A family ticket for a family of four works out at about £8 per person, which is amazing value. Full details of current prices are shown on our website, along with full details of rides, etc., and directions for getting to us. We also have a number of special offers. For example, if you live locally, why not join our Adventurers Club, which entitles you to 50% off ticket prices all year round, and a special lane for all rides and exhibits, which means you don't have to wait to get into any part of the park. See the Offers tab on the website. We've recently added a number of new exhibits to the park, and we're particularly proud of our Future Farm Zone, which houses over 20 different species of animals, from chipmunks to dairy cows. The emphasis is on getting near to the animals. All of them can be petted, and you can buy food for feeding the animals. 
Many of our younger visitors say that this is the high point of their visit. And speaking of food, don't let the animals have all the fun. We have a total of seven different catering outlets on the site. We're open 10 to 5.30 all year round, and cold drinks and snacks can be bought at any time during opening hours. And hot food is available most of the day in the Hungry Horse Cafe from 11 until 5, just half an hour before closing time. Now you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now we want all our visitors to have an exciting time when they come to the park, but our first priority must be safety. Parents and guardians know their children's behaviour and capabilities, but here at the park we have set certain conditions for each of the rides to ensure that all visitors get the maximum enjoyment out of the experience and feel secure at all times. There are four major rides at the park. Our newest ride is the River Adventure, which is designed to reproduce the experience of white water rafting. No amount of protective clothing would make any difference, so only go on this ride if you're prepared to get wet. Children under 8 can go on this ride, but all under 16s must have an adult with them. Not all of our rides are designed for thrills and spills, our Jungle Gym roller coaster is a gentler version of the classic Loop the Loop, specially created for whole family enjoyment, from the smallest children to elderly grandparents, suitable for all levels of disability and health conditions. Carriages have comfortable seating for up to eight people with safety belts for each passenger, which must be worn at all times. Sit back and enjoy the scenery. One of the best established and most popular of Camber's rides is the massive swoop slide. Whiz down the polished vertical slide, nine meters in height, and scream to your heart's content. There are no age or height restrictions. Be careful, though. You must have on long trousers so you won't get any speed burns. And then there's the famous Zip Go-Kart Stadium with 16 carts, 8 for single drivers and 8 for kids preferring to ride along with mum, dad or carer. Take part in high-speed races in our specially designed Formula One style carts, but no bumping other carts, please. All riders must be above 1.2 metres because they have to be able to reach the pedals, even in the shared carts. Full details of all safety features are available on our website at www.canvaspark.com. So come and make a day of it at Canvas Theme Park. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You will hear a talk about safety in different regions. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24.
Good evening, everyone. It's great to be here to talk to you about staying safe on holiday. Before I came this evening, I did a little research on where students like to go for their holidays, and came up with two different regions: Latin America and India. So, um, I've been looking at the crime figures for both areas. And I thought I'd start by talking a bit about that. Then I'll give you some advice about how to avoid becoming a victim of crime. Okay, first of all, let's look at what kinds of crime are committed most in different regions. Um, okay, I'll start with India. Generally, India isn't thought of as a dangerous place for individuals, but there has been an increase in handbag theft in recent years. So keep an eye on your bag when you're out in the street. Right now, let's look at Latin America.、Mm. Of course, you do realise that not all Latin American countries are the same, but it is true to say that guns are used in a high percentage of crimes across the region. Looking at the figures, it seems that gun crime is a serious problem throughout. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-five to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-five to thirty. I can see some of you are thinking that it all sounds rather dangerous, but I know lots of people who've been there and had a really great time. They followed advice from the authorities, like making sure they didn't wear expensive jewellery in the street. And I'd certainly advise anyone travelling to Latin America to do the same. Another thing you should be careful of is not to go to lonely places at night, but of course that's the same anywhere. But I must say, you do have to be very careful in some parts of Latin America when you take your money out of a cash machine. Sometimes you find that thieves stand very close to people at cash machines and take their money as it comes out. Okay, so now I'll finish by talking a little bit about India. I've actually been to India, and I didn't have any feeling that it was dangerous at all. First of all, I went on an organised tour with a group of people. This is definitely the best way to go because it's so much safer. I mean, I didn't go anywhere without the group, and we had a tour guide who spoke the local language and knew the area. In fact, I remember now, she warned us not to go off with strangers, even if they seem nice and friendly. But again, you wouldn't do that at home either, would you? The end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You are going to hear a talk on the writer Charles Dickens, given by a university lecturer to a group of students. First, look at questions thirty-one to forty. Good morning. My name is Professor Sarah Lennon, and I'm here today to talk to you about the works of one of the greatest writers in the English language, Charles Dickens. He wrote many books, 
And if we bear in mind that there are over 2,000 characters in his stories, we can get an idea of the complexity of his work. I've selected one novel from your reading list that I would like to talk about to illustrate his genius, namely Dombey and Son. But before we look at this work in earnest, I thought it might be a good idea to have a quick look at his life and also at a few of the major events that happened during his lifetime so that we can try to put his writing into perspective. Dickens was born on the 7th of February, 1812, at the time when his father was working in Portsmouth Dockyard. His father was transferred to London in 1814. To help give us a picture of the time Dickens was born into, it's worth noting that in 1814, when Dickens was two, the first efficient steam locomotive was constructed in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Then, in 1817, the year that Queen Victoria was born and Waterloo Bridge in London was opened, the Dickens family moved away from London. And to give Dickens' life a literary perspective, in the following year, works by other famous English writers were published. Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey and Persuasion, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and Scott's The Heart of Midlothian. When Dickens was almost ten, his family circumstances changed, and in 1822 the family moved back to London. In 1824, John Dickens was arrested for debt and imprisoned in the Marshalsea, near London Bridge, in London. This event had a profound effect on Dickens' writing. From 1827, Charles Dickens had various jobs as solicitor's clerk, freelance reporter and newspaper reporter. In December 1833, Dickens had his first story, A Dinner at Poplar Wall, published in The Monthly Magazine. In the same year, the SS Royal William became the first vessel to cross the Atlantic Ocean by steam alone. In 1836, two important events happened. Dickens published the first series of sketches by Boz, and the publishers, Chapman and Hall, suggested his first novel, The Pickwick Papers. In April of the same year, the second major event took place. Dickens married Catherine Hogarth. And in 1837 the year that Queen Victoria became Queen of England and Samuel B. Morse developed Telegraph, the novel Oliver Twist began publication in Bentley's Miscellany in 24 monthly instalments. You may not be aware that serialisation like this was common in Dickens' time. In the subsequent year, that is in 1838, the serialisation of Nicholas Nickleby started and appeared in 20 instalments. Dickens' novel, The Old Curiosity Shop, began serialisation in 1840. This was the year the first postage stamp, the Penny Post, was brought in by Rowland Hill, and the year the first bicycle was produced. The next major publication for Dickens was in 1842, when the first part of Martin Chuzzlewit appeared, and in 1848, Dombey and Son was published. Now, uh, do you have any questions before we go on to look at this work in some depth? That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test, and speaking QCAT guesswork. Please, guys, participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired dance score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com. The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, 
then please join my telegram channel so guys please write your score below the comment section again thanks for listening god bless you all guys stay tuned stay safe